I'm a feminist, but sometimes when I'm watching like a modern James Bond, that they've gone to a great deal of effort to make a bit less sexist, I think, oh, just fucking bring back Sean Connery and be done with it. <laughs> because honestly, fucking honestly, I'm like, what, you've made Emma a woman. Does this make any of this better? Like, they don't let him fuck five women in a movie anymore. <laughs> They just let him, like, fall in love with one and then she dies and he feels sad. And then he fucks another one quickly to stop feeling sad. And he fucks a third one usually because she's bad and he's trying to get something out of her. That's the sexiest one, yeah. isn't it? The sexiest one is when he fucks the enemy one. He didn't have any sex in the last one, right? No sex. What's Do you up have with no- that? <laughs> Yeah, this is the thing. It's not really why I go to Bond. Although I was very happy Phoebe Waller Bridge wrote on it, and I saw lovely Phoebe gags in it and all those sorts of things. Yes. But in general, and yeah. you know, I'll watch anything Phoebe does. But in general, I'm just like, do you know what I mean by this? Instead of making something that's incredibly sexist, like just let's dial it back and pretend it's okay, I say either stop doing it or go full throttle. <laughs> either just go, look, we're here for an hour and a half. Let's have him. Fuck a load of enemies, but super sexily. Yeah. Like peg a Nazi. <laughs> Give the people what they want. Someone in the front row has literally shouted yes and clapped. It's why I watch Mad Men sometimes. Yeah. Like most of the time I'm watching it for the feminism. <laughs> and no, I am. Because I want to see Peggy grow and evolve through the 60s and fight the men and get into a slightly better room in a slightly nicer dress to be treated like a slightly better class of shit. It's, that is all, that's really what happens. Yeah. But she's powering out for us, and so is Joan. They're, they're powering out for us. It's an amazing show. And I, I've, I'm mostly watching it for the feminism. I watch it for the smoking. <laughs> It gets me smoking again, which is well, it's what we all want. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> now a health you... ad. Okay, uh, I'm a feminist, but I thought I was being catcalled last week. And as I turned around to give the guy the middle finger, uh, realized it was not a cat call at all, but a man uh, talking to his daughter in her stroller. Um, <gasps> oh, oh, oh. And I immediately felt both disappointment and arousal. <laughs> Yeah, like I thought he was like making like goo goo ga ga sounds. Why? And I was like, that must be for me. Why did you feel arousal? Just because your ovaries were activated yeah, by a man being nice a, to yeah, the child? Yeah, man's yeah. being good to a baby. Uh, There's man, no woman around. I'm like, well, I must tend to this child yeah. now. So, man holding baby on a Thena poster, and you just go, oh, he's Sploosh. a father. Yeah, yeah, total. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, if I get catcalled, I can in one, it's the same thought. It's just one run on sentence that goes, that's terrible, still got it. <laughs> Excellent. I don't approve of catcalling. For other women. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, I just don't approve. I don't like aggressive, like, oh, I love her. <laughs> don't like that. But one time I was walking down the street and a man just went, groovy chick. And it was really nice because it wasn't, it wasn't trying to have changed me. It wasn't trying to make yeah. me blush. He wasn't trying to make me annoyed. He wasn't trying to, like, it wasn't performative. It wasn't for anyone else. It was just like a little acknowledgement that I was, in fact, a groovy yeah. chick. Accurate. Absolutely. That's accurate. That's accurate. You got your vibe. Okay, I'm going to do one on top of that. I'm a feminist, but I always fear I maybe have had my last cat call. And when it happens again, I'm angry with men. But don't do it. If you were a man, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not good. And I don't like it. But I do know that uh, one day will be the last, right? (laughs) One day it's got to be the last time that anyone... No, actually, I'm going to stipulate in my will that I will be catcalled in my casket. (laughs) That will be, and I won't be there for you. What would you like me to say? (sighs) Look at this fucking sexy piece of ass. <laughs> Just like that. I want finger guns. I want like, I want confidence. Is there anything I can say that won't get me kicked out of your funeral? Because that... <laughs> yeah, like it'll be in the synagogue. So like no anti-Semitism. <laughs> but everything else, nothing else is off, in off limits. In what world would I do anti-Semitic cat calling? <laughs> In I don't know, Deb. World? I don't know, Deb. It's a, it's a crazy world right now. You've I mi- don't know. <laughs> You've misunderstood the title of the show. Like so many people here tonight. Somebody suggested Groovy Chick from the audience, which I thought was nice. That would be a nice... I might get a t-shirt that says Groovy Chick. And then, then I'm carrying my own like pleasant comp- street... 
I think it wasn't a cat call. It was a Pleasant Street compliment. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to write that down. Pleasant Street compliment. PSC, classic. Yeah, I think you're allowed to give a Pleasant Street compliment yeah. if you get the tone right. You don't know if you're going to those, so don't do it. But you, <laughs> if you know that you're good, if you know... You know, and I sometimes think, well, surely old men will catcall old women. They don't. They catcall young women. Yeah. That's the yeah, tragedy. That's the real problem. That's not. All of it's a real problem. Talk about a new thing. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm a feminist, but I uh, have a thing for bad boys. And in 2023, that means I have a thing for incels. Oh, you don't. I'm sorry, but like, it, no. honestly, no, I don't actually. Well, I listen. No. Listen, wait, stop. This is not Just right. Stop it. What? I'm getting canceled tonight. I know, but listen, wait, wait, stop it. Listen, listen, no. listen, Deb. In an, in a recent in recent history, a bad boy was like smoked cigarettes. <laughs> like that was a bad boy. And now a bad boy is like toxic. <laughs> and and I like bad boys. I don't like toxic masculinity. I don't like incels, obviously, but like I like a bad boy. <laughs> and they haven't evolved. Can I just say to you, my needs? <laughs> babe, if you volunteer to have sex with an incel, yeah. he's no longer an incel. Yeah. And there's your fucking paradox. Yeah. Because an incel means an involuntary celibate. Yeah. And you're gonna take that away from him. <laughs> By sitting on his face. <laughs> that would be great, though. That also... That would feel about like a power move. That's a power move. And that's, that's solving the problem, right? That's, listen, that's doing my part. Listen, that is a very, very disturbing fetish. I don't mean to kink shame you, but I'm forced to. Okay. That's fair. I'm a feminist, but sometimes when I have PMT... I like having the patriarchy to hate. It's really nice to have something to hate, isn't it? You know, when you're just angry for no reason, you just go, I'm allowed to hate the patriarchy. I call it hatriarching. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, what's PMT? Oh, PMS. Oh, why didn't you say PMS? Oh, because I, I think, do, do you all say PMS here? Yeah. Oh. oh, did I cut, fuck that joke? Because yeah. you didn't know what it was. That would have been a lot funnier. Yeah, they would have laughed. In Australia, we often say S, and I just thought, is it T or S here? I, I couldn't remember. What's that. the T for? Trauma? Tension. I don't know which one it is here. Which one is it here? S. It's S here. S. And people are saying T. Okay. All right. Okay. We, we love got, each other. <laughs> we found the two kinds of feminists. The PMTs and the PMSs. Yeah. We will, we will rumble at dawn. Yeah. Wowzers. Have, have you got any more? Yeah, I've got so many. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm a feminist, uh, but it really bums me out that no one's ever told me I'm too hot to do comedy. <laughs> I've never been told that. Is that a thing people say? That's the thing people say. Listen, listen, y'all. I'm going to let you in on some... these fucking incels this, you're no. hanging around no, with? No, 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 no. It's not even incels. I've it's never heard incels. this. Never heard this. Listen, why haven't I heard it? <laughs> why has no one said to me to hard to do comedy in my whole damn it's life? It's bad news. I'm, I'm unfortunately a part of like several group WhatsApp chats, like all female comedy chats. And like the number one complaint is women comics coming on the group chat and being like... Ugh. Another man told me today that I was too hot to do comedy. And I, the only feeling I ever have is jealousy. I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry, you're complaining about that? I, <laughs> I feel I'm the right amount of hot to do comedy. Yeah. I well, think like it's, I'm sort of bubbling. I'm like, I'm not like, I'm not boiling point. But as a simmer, I've got a simmer about me, I think. I think and, you're... I think you're a rolling boil. Is that the... A rolling boil. Yeah, a rolling boil. You yeah, know, I yeah. never thought it would be a compliment to be called a rolling boil. Yeah. But yeah. It, oh, when it you is. say it, it yeah. sounds like yeah, a... Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I like... I don't really... You know, when I was younger, I definitely wanted to be like... You know, we were all told we had to be Jennifer Aniston or Jennifer Lopez, pick one. And now I just think... You know, Sofia Vergara, that kind of... I think, well, why wouldn't it be great to be her for 24 hours? But then also, people would get very distracted... And they wouldn't listen to what you said. Great. And I don't think it would be, I don't think it would be relaxing at all. No. I don't think I'd like it. I think I like being medium warm. Oh, God. 
I don't think you're medium warm. I think you're very hot. I really? Think, yeah, I do. I, I think I honestly am now. It's true when when you're young. I mean, and, and when I grew up in the '90s. Like you are conditioned to mm. to want to look like a certain celebrity or whatever. That's your mindset. But now I think. I, I, correct me if I'm wrong, but it feels like we're now like, no, be the hottest version of yourself. Like that's mm. sort of the new, right? Am I, or am I wrong? <laughs> am I totally off the mark? <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I'm a feminist, but I know how to get people to say I'm hot. Mm. It's by saying, I don't think I'm really that hot. <laughs> I mean, I think I'm a little hot, but I think I'm warm rather than hot. And I find it's never once failed me. Well done. Have you got any more? Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> I'm a feminist, but I got a Brazilian for this podcast recording. Wow. Shut it down. We're not going to do better than that. Well done, Zoe Brass. Did you really get a for Brazilian for tonight? What, just to feel all fresh and waxy? Just in case. <laughs> Live from Soho Theatre in London, the Spontaneity Shop presents The Guilty Feminist with me, Libra Bronson's White, guest host Zoe Brownstone, and our very special guest, Esther Benito, talking about romance. Hello, 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 and welcome Soho Theatre. Oh my God, this is so exciting. We're back to the kind of theatre where you can touch people. Don't... I didn't touch her because I didn't get consent yet. Can I touch you? Not in a covid place, just in a... But also the knee seems wrong now, doesn't it, as well? That seems a bit, bit like the Me Too movement's passed me by if I touch you on the knee. Can I just do an ankle? Although in Victorian times, that was the knee, wasn't it? It's very tricky. Where would you just fist bump? Hey, there you go. There you go. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. Just give us a cheer if you listen to The Guilty Feminist. Just give us a cheer if you don't know what you're at. Oh, you sounded too happy. You don't know what you're at? I don't know. But, uh, uh, where, where do you think you are? I didn't know it was a comedy until just now. Oh, <laughs> so that was comedy. What did you think it was? It was a play. You thought it was a play? <laughs> Oh, God. Okay. Well, I feel we should... Well, you thought it was a play called The Guilty Feminist because you were at Soho Theatre and you thought, oh, this will be interesting. Who brought you? Um, that woman there. That woman there. Okay. The first thing you need to learn at feminist school <laughs> is we don't usually say that woman there. We are very fond of calling women by their names. We just feel it engenders us with a sense of humanity that's so often lacking... Uh, in our daily lives. Who's that woman there? Uh, what's your name? Consuela. And with such a good name. Why would you not take the opportunity to say Consuela? I would take every opportunity. If somebody said to me, who brought you? I would just immediately become very Matahari about the whole thing. I'd feel like a, a spy. I'd just be like, who brought you? Consuela. Do you know her? We mustn't speak for long. It's very dangerous. Uh, I do not mean to imbue your name with all of that romance, um, but, uh, but I feel it deserves it. Does it make you think of anything else? But I bet you get this all the time. Yeah. Everyone who knows what it makes them think of that she gets all the time, just say yes. yes. Everyone who has no idea what friends is, <laughs> say no. Yeah, you don't know. Okay. I'm not going to say it because she gets it all the time and I wouldn't want it because I just think it's such a romantic, gorgeous name. And uh, I feel it's the name of a feminist, Consuela. So, Consuela, um, you brought that man there. <laughs> and I don't wish to say it, I want to assume your gender. Is it, are you, uh, yes, you identify as a man? Okay. Um, so, Consuela brought that man there. And <laughs> did you have a fight or something? Because you're sitting very far apart. So a, <laughs> is this a first date? Because it's not going very well. <laughs> It's not going very well, is it, gang? It's not going very well. Imagine, imagine coming on a hinge date. I'm taking you to the theatre. He thinks it's a play. Turns out he's sitting eight seats away, surrounded entirely by feminists. He's not sure he is one. Uh, he's about to find out. Uh, would you identify as a feminist? <laughs> it's the confidence of men I admire. Because if this was, this is, if you'd accidentally come to a men's rights activist rally and you thought it was a play, but you're stuck in the second row 
And someone said, would you think of yourself as a men's rights activist? Just for self-preservation. I'd go, yeah, love, love rights. More rights for men, please. Mm-hmm. Yum, yum for those rights. Or at least I'm very interested in learning more. That's what I would say. I wouldn't go... Mm. But because I would feel like, you know... The reality is, if we, if we all just leaned in a bit, you know, we could crush him. Um, now, some people say that's the kind of thing feminists do, and that's why we would never do it. What's your name? Harry. Harry. Of course it is. Harry. <laughs> Harry. 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 What do you think feminism is, Harry? You think it's a movement for the equality of women? Mm. people are impressed don't woo Harry (laughs) for having heard of feminism don't woo him a contemporary feminist stance would be a sort of intersectional stance where we would be looking not just at gender but the intersection of gender and other privileges and marginalisations Harry yeah Yeah. (laughs) Harry would agree with that yeah why would you when you've identified that feminism is about Equality for women. Um, why would you hesitate to say you were one? <laughs> Just out of interest. I'm not, actively involved in doing about I'm not actively involved in doing anything about it. So I think it's disingenuous for me to say it. Sorry, I'm just repeating for this is a podcast. Yes, so you, you won't know this. It's a podcast. <laughs> it's no idea. Harry, this is a very popular podcast. It's all over the globe. The reason I'm uh, repeating it into the microphone is otherwise they might not pick up what you're saying, Harry. And I need them to very much. <laughs> Because I don't want them to hear this level of laughter and think, I feel excluded, I'm in Sydney. What's Harry saying? He sounds very funny. (laughs) So what Harry's saying is, listen, I want to say I'm a feminist and I'm doing something about it. It's turned, it's turned, it's turned the opinion, hasn't it? People are like, we suddenly like Harry now. We go, yes, other men say they're feminists and they're not doing anything. Not doing anything, but Harry identifies he's not doing anything. There were some nods of admiration. Because the bar is really that low for men. <laughs> and men are like, he knows he's not doing anything. What a self-aware, unfeminist man. But self-aware, though, that's the main thing, isn't it? That's the main thing. That's all we're looking for. Yeah, yeah, no, no. We, we went out on Bumble looking for love and equality. And we've come back going, just a man who's shit but knows it. <laughs> a man who knows it and is not going to gaslight me into thinking he's more than he is day and fucking night. Harry, and I don't want you to assume again, Harry, I mean, you're, you might be very happy with Consuela. You may not be a couple. You may be in a same-sex relationship. I don't know, Harry. I have no idea. You may be single. You may be looking for love in all the wrong places, Harry. Is it okay to inquire as to further? I'm gay. I'm gay? Okay. <laughs> not quite together. Yes. I, I, yeah, I've got a best gay friend like that. Um, uh, I've got a best gay friend and we're not quite together. Um, obviously we would be, were, you know, (laughs) things were different, Harry. So many things could be different. Um, what do you think, what do you think of the play, Harry? (laughs) I feel like Consuela and I should act something out. What did you tell him about this? You didn't say it was a play. Oh, oh, there's a whole row of people who think it's a play. There's a whole row of people who think it's a play. So you're not just with Harry. You've not just sat in there. You've brought a bunch of friends. This is your friends who, if you're friends with Consuela, put your hand up. It could be the whole audience. Just, just oh my God, there's people way back there. Consuela, you brought half the audience. What's happened here? Consuela, you've brought so much of the audience. What's happened? Um, nothing. I got, I got bored of my studying in my master's. And I was like, I want to go to this thing on Friday. I was like, let's go and send in. So you sent a group chat. So do you know the guilty feminist? (laughs) This is so unusual now because the show's been running for quite a few years now. So people tend to know what they're coming to or they're with somebody who's brought them. It's usually it's usually a straight husband who's been brought because his wife thinks he can learn something. I mean, there's do you know who else it is, though? Men on third dates bring a date to go. Huh? I've brought you to something entertaining, but also, you'll note, what a feminist I am. <laughs> so if you are in two minds about whether or not we're going to take this to the next level, fear not! 
I have got, I'm a feminist, but I've got so many men in the city laid. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. It's absolutely true. So, Consuela, what did you think this was? Did you just see it on the Soho Theatre website and go, oh, that looks up my street? Instagram, my Instagram. Oh, I've stepped on your foot, Consuela. I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what? You saw it on Instagram. Um, I just like the idea of questioning what feminism is. Like, Are you happy so far? Because we've done a lot of it with your <laughs> friend. I think we should grill him more. <laughs> okay, excellent. Would you say you're a queer rights activist, Henry? Harry? Harry. Well, I thought you probably are Henry. I was just formalising it. Are you, are you really Henry? I changed my name at 18 because I hated the name Henry. Oh, you were Henry. You changed it to Harry because you hated it. People have... Did you... When you went down to the deed poll office to change your name, did they say, you know, you can change it to anything? <laughs> and were you in that moment tempted... To change your name to something even more exciting than Henry to Harry, it's a very short journey. When hearing that, did you ever at any point stop and think, oh, I just really want to say, I will be Princess Consuela Banana Hammock. <laughs> and that's the Friends joke, if you didn't know it from before. Fee, that's what Phoebe changed her name to. And I didn't want to go there because I just thought, oh, Consuela will get that all the time. But now it's come back around. It's clever. <laughs> Do you see, it was easy, it was easy before, it was an easy, it was low-hanging fruit, but the fruit just crept up the vine. And as a comedian, I saw it, I saw it going up the vine in that moment, and I thought, I'm having you, my fucker. Oh, come on! All right, are we ready to start the show? Well then, please, welcome to the stage, the incredible Zoe Brownstone! Come, come, Zoe. Um, this is The Guilty Feminist, the podcast in which we explore our noble goals as 21st century feminists and our hypocrisies and insecurities which undermine them. Woo! I'm Deborah Francis White, with me is Zoe Brownstone, and we are talking about romance. Woo! Do you know... We've never once talked about romance I'm as a topic. I can't believe that. We, and I search for new topics now because we talk about it. Sometimes we bring something back because obviously what I thought seven years ago about nudity is not what I think now, you know, and Naturally. I've moved on. Um, I've, uh, my feminism, I've grown up in my feminism. I've got older, I've got more comfortable in my body. And then, you know, it's a move all face the body, isn't it? How comfortable we are in it. Yeah. Um, I've definitely changed my politics a lot, my activism. I've understood a lot more. But I don't think in all of that time, I just think... That's nuts. I think it's because we maybe didn't think it was a sort of feminist enough topic. And that's actually a very good reason to discuss it because it's something, it's a human topic. Totally. It's a human topic. And I think, like, it's a very gendered topic. Mm. I think that there are certain things you can be romantic as a woman or as a man. And it's like, well, mm. we're abandoning those titles, aren't we? <laughs> like gender mm. is now fluid. And I think romance has to also like evolve mm. past what we've decided deemed reasonable as a woman or as a man or as a non-binary person. Like mm. the romance needs to also evolve. That language also needs to evolve. Yes. I don't think I am abandoning the title woman, but I want more opportunity for more people to define themselves how they would like to be defined and how they genuinely feel. I want more people to be able to say on the outside how they feel on the inside mm. without anyone going, eh, it's not a thing. Um, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be great? It's not much to ask for really, isn't it? Just if someone tells you who they are, believe them. That's what Mother Ayahuasca told me when I was up a mountain in Spain. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. She said, it was, everyone knows who they are and they'll tell you if you will just listen. Um, and then I had to have the session afterwards with the shaman um, and something had come up about trans people and that's what she'd said. And I said to the shaman and uh, he spoke Spanish, so we had an interpreter and he was very warm, very spiritual, very, you know, you know that kind of person that's hovering above the earth and he just fe he felt very hovery. <laughs> and he's, you know, he's. Sorry, was this before or after you did the drugs? It's not drugs. It's okay. a very, it's a divine medicine. It's a divine medicine. And <laughs> it is. I'm so sorry, my bad. <laughs> it is. And he, uh, I mean, I talked obviously a lot about personal things, but this is something that came up. And I said to him, uh, Neil, because um, uh, he's a Peruvian plant medicine person. He's been you know, 
he's an expert in plant medicine. Hopefully. And he said, <laughs> what was that? Hopefully. <laughs> no, but like some people are just ayahuascaris. Anyway, I'm getting too far down that. Yeah. <laughs> and he, I said to him, this is what Mother Earth had said to me. And I said, is there anything, I'm really fascinated by this, is there anything in the Peruvian tradition from which you come? Because this is obviously, you know, hundreds, if not thousands of years old. And I was like, is there anything in the Peruvian tradition about trans people? And it was the only time he looked annoyed at me. And he said, Deborah, this is a divine medicine. If Mother Earth tells you something is so, you do not check with a man. To see if it is true. Slap. I'm a feminist, but... Yeah. <laughs> you got told. Yeah. Mother yeah. Earth. But then Mother Earth told me. You had to double check with a man. I, literal Mother Earth, told me. And see, that's something I can do better, Consuela. <laughs> if Mother Earth tells me something is so, I shouldn't go to a man and go... Could you just confirm something for me? I mean, you went I, to a man, I would have Googled it. So that, I think that's at well, least a human. Well, I, I did, just because I was really fascinated as to where this had come from. Because sometimes you get told something and you've never heard it before and then you Google it and it is in that tradition. And in the um, Andean Cosmovision, which is the sort of, it's like, it's a way of looking at the world. It's the prism, it's the paradigm for looking at the world from this area where ayahuasca was uh, first discovered that these two plants were put together. Um it said that uh, transgender or third gender shaman were the most sacred in the Andean cosmovision. But then the conquistadors came, bringing Christianity and death in equal measure, and they killed them all because they were like, no, you can't be a third gender. Yeah. yeah. That happened in North America too. Yeah. Yeah. It's, in, in, in indigenous cultures, the two spirit is, is revered and that's, it's weird how we've just like forgotten all of this. Like that's, that's our history, our human history. It's, yeah, it's, it's our human that. history, but yeah, our more recent human history is more conquistadors than third gender shaman, yes. sadly. Yeah. I have such an amazing time with an ale and shaman, and I've had very rarely had a good time with conquistadors. Oh. <laughs> There's so still time. If, if, if shaman and conquistadors are the real two genders, yeah. I'm going to pick shaman. That's a good choice. Yeah, yeah. it's a great choice. I stand that. All right. You could think of it like a little play if you wanted to. <laughs> it's a good, good part of this audience thinks thought they were yeah, coming to I, a play. I heard. That's yeah. amazing. That's I love that energy. I think we should act out a little yeah. play later yeah. when it comes on. Yeah, yeah. A Greek okay. tragedy. I think we should improvise the play. We think they thought they were coming to see. Yes, yeah. But just said guilty feminists. Yeah. I think we should improvise it when Esther comes on. Yeah, there's a murder. Oh, she's a guilty feminist. Come on. Mm. Oh, that's good. She oh, murdered. Writing. She murdered Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Oh no, that's the opposite. No, that's a guilty feminist. That's a very guilty feminist. If it's a feminist that m- murdered her. <laughs> no, but I think a guilty feminist is a feminist that like might murder like a man. Oh, okay. like fine. You, that's, that's that's classic. Deborah has to make it about a man. Like okay. I'm trying to make it about women. <laughs> All she's trying to do is center Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> And I'm like, do we have to kill her when she's already dead? Yeah, we do. <laughs> Are you ready for the stand-up comedy? <laughs> then put your hands together and make incredible woohoo noises for the wonderful Zoe Brownstone. <laughs> Thank you, guys. You've been so lovely. Um, so I, my name is Zoe. I moved here uh, recently from Canada. Are there any Canadians in? Nice. That's the most Canadian response. Just like a polite applause. (laughs) Love that. I love being uh, from Canada. It's cool. I find when I meet a British person, I have to immediately tell them that I'm from Canada. (laughs) Otherwise, you hear my accent. You assume that I'm probably armed. So I have to (laughs) be quick about that. Uh, I love living here. I've been here for a year. I love British people in the room. I love... Love you so much. Oh, my God. <laughs> love British people. I love your accent. The way you say some words, like, I, I find so delightful. Like, like so, like, 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 toilet. <laughs> Trolley. <laughs> Colonialism. <laughs> Sorry, I said that wrong. It's pronounced monarchy. <laughs> I uh, I am I, I I'm a I'm a self-professed uh, uh, hopeless romantic. Any any other idiots in the room? 
Uh, yeah, uh, Art, truly. Like I, I, yeah, it's awful. I think being a romantic is bad. That's bad news. I don't know. It's not serving me well. I think it's bad. I think it's bad for your health. I think. Uh, <laughs> I think romance is like vaping. Let the children do it. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, that's not for adults. I don't, I don't think that's good. I, uh, I think it, it's like, it, and it's weird because we're supposed to, we're conditioned now, like in 2023, we're supposed to be proud. I'm supposed to be proud of being alone. Like I'm supposed to wear that like as a badge of honor when really it feels more like a denim thong. <laughs> and the more I try to take it off, the higher up my asshole it rides. And it's not cute. Um, I, uh, d- are there any parents in the room? Nice. You sound so excited about that. It's so thrilling. I'm not, I don't have any kids. Uh, my, my brother has a kid and my sister has a kid. And this week I finished a bottle of vitamins. So we're all maturing, <laughs> uh, at a rapid rate. I don't have kids. Uh, I'm, I'm scared to have children if I'm being honest. I think like it must be terrifying to have a daughter because you have a daughter, like you're going to be afraid for her safety for so long, like her, her bodily safety. I think that's a fear. And if you have a son, you're going to be afraid for his height. And that's like a, that's like a 15 year long mystery. Like you got to wait that out to figure out if he'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, no, no kids. I have been I have been a stepmom <laughs> twice. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I've been a stepmom twice because my love language is being ignored. <laughs> That's what I am. Awful. Terrible. Like, uh, temper tantrums, spanking, constant sulking. Like, to bring a child into that environment, it's not healthy. Stepmom. To so being a stepmom's not, it's not good. Like, the sound that you made was perfect. No one likes a stepmom. Like, we do not have a good reputation. We don't do well in Hollywood. Like, Hollywood does not smile kindly on the stepmom, which is awful. Like, right? Like, stepmoms are always, like, an evil witch trying to, like, poison the child. <laughs> and it never works. <laughs> I thought that was going to get a bigger laugh. Uh, <laughs> we do well in porn. Stepmoms are sort of the heroes of porn. <laughs> it's like big titted milfs and stepmoms are sort of the frontline workers of porn. <laughs> um, I, I actually I moved to the Netherlands. This is my 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 latest romantic escapade was I moved to the Netherlands uh, a few years ago to be with a guy, um, a Dutch guy, and. <laughs> It's awful. We met at a wedding. Like, it was so romantic. I was the maid of honor. He was the groom. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. That's terrible. Uh, he w- It's worse. He was the best man. Like, that's worse. That is terrible. I was the maid of honor. So I did the honorable thing, and I tricked him into having sex with me <laughs> um, because I'm a sneaky Jew. <laughs> Sorry. That was... There's a whole other bit to that that I should have said. Um, <laughs> It was, it was, honestly, it was romantic at first. Like, he swept me off my feet. We hooked up at the wedding. It was, like, very hot. Uh, and then he impregnated me uh, with love. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> so I moved to the Netherlands to be with him. And it was, it, was, it was very romantic at first. When I first got there, he lived in this house. It was very lovely. Um, he, the not romantic part was he did have a roommate, which was not so comfortable for me because um, she was the worst. At, like, she just never, she didn't participate in the household, right? She didn't cook. She didn't clean. None of that. And I would complain to him all the time time i'd be like babe love you love the netherlands i guess um but can we <laughs> we just talk about getting our own place without a roommate and he'd give me the same answer every time which was zoe please stop calling my daughter our roommate so <laughs> stepmom of the year i think that's yeah no it didn't work out thank you for asking <laughs> it got so bad that one night he proposed that we break up so we did <laughs> And now I am single in London, which is so fun. <laughs> That's what a wild time that is. Anyone here enjoying being on a dating app? Is anyone having fun with that? Not a one, hey? Whole bunch of feminists. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm not, I don't get it. Like, I, I really don't get it. It's like, it seems to be the only way to meet someone is, is on a dating app. And yet the dating app formula is flawed completely, right? Because not a single dating app has a rate and review section. <laughs> That's insane. That's insane, okay? I'm on Hinge, the LinkedIn of dating apps. And I think, 
I think it's crazy that you can't scroll to the bottom and leave a review. I have feedback. You know what I'm saying? Like that's that's crazy. And all everywhere else on the internet, you can scroll to the bottom, you can leave a review, you can look at other products that you might be interested in. <laughs> It's just logical, right? Like you go down, you go down to a restaurant, you eat a delicious meal, you can leave a review, you've got Yelp, you've got TripAdvisor, but you go down on me, you eat a delicious meal. (laughs) No review, you know? (laughs) It's unhygienic. (laughs) Just think it would be so nice, a little review, just a little like, little, little fun well, fun stuff, right? Like, like for me, for instance, like Zoe talks too much about being Jewish, gives great head, five stars. Yes. So fun and true. That'd be great. I would love five stars. That'd be awesome. Give me all the gold stars. Just don't ask me to wear them on my chest. Okay. Sorry, another weird Holocaust joke. <laughs> too quick for some of you. Um, <laughs> I, um, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm feeling better in 2023 about, uh, body issues. I think I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good about that. Last year was a bit dark. I was getting into like some really creepy fad diets. Um, do we, we, have we heard of uh, intermittent fasting? Yeah. Say what you will. It is technically the easiest one, right? Cause it's super simple for those of you that don't know intermittent fasting, um, for 16 hours, you don't eat no food for 16 hours. And then for the next eight hours, you do as much cocaine as possible <laughs> to prepare for the next 16 hours. Yeah. Very effective. Lots of diarrhea. Highly recommended. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm taking a break from, from dating right now. Um, I had a recent health scare, um, which is crazy because I only recently turned 32 years ago and I, <laughs> it, it seems too soon. I think it's too soon, um, for this. I thought I had a bit more time, but stuff's changing already in my thirties. Uh, I've developed a lazy nipple. I don't know what the medical term is. <laughs> lazy nipple, broken nipple, boner killer. I'm not sure. The lazy nipple. And it's really, I don't know. So, so women's nipples awesome so cool i have the transformer type the shapeshifters if you will you know what i'm talking about right they change they morph nope just me all right you know like when you get a little cold or you get a little horny or winnie houston like hits a high note right they they show up they're like dog's ears they can sense excitement i think it's great i think it's cool i love it i love when they're in synchro that's fun um but lately one of my girls she's not pulling her weight (laughs) And when I take my top off, it looks like I'm winking at you. It's not cute. It's not a good look. And it's for sure karma, 100% karma, because in high school, I had a teacher with a lazy eye. And we used to fuck. Uh, No, sorry. No, no, no. No, No, I had a teacher with a lazy eye, and I used to cheat in her class a lot. I used to cheat in her class um, because I wasn't held enough as a child. Um, And she would, I would cheat, and she would look up, and I could never tell if she had caught me. Or she was looking at the boy behind me to the right. <laughs> and now when I'm in bed with a guy, brag, and he's doing, and he's doing something great. Um, well, one of my nipples looks him dead in the eye. <laughs> and the other nipple is looking over his shoulder <laughs> at the boy behind him to the right. <laughs> you guys have been so much fun. Thank you. <laughs> Zoe Bronson, everybody. Hello, Guilty Feminists. This is Deborah. We have some shows coming up. If you're in London, we will be at the Soho Theatre on the 30th of May and the 31st of May. And we will be at King's Place on the 5th of June, the 22nd of June and the 24th of July. For tickets, go to guiltyfeminist.com and click on live shows. My play, Never Have I Ever, is at Chichester Festival Theatre from the 1st to the 30th of September. Tickets are now on sale, but I'm glad to say they're going fast. So if you'd like to see it, go to CFT. Dot org dot uk and look for Never Have I Ever with the incredible Susie Wacoma, Alexandra Roach and Greg Wise and more. And on the 21st of August, there will be a special episode of The Guilty Feminist from Chichester, where hopefully we'll be talking all things Never Have I Ever. Join our Patreon to get ad-free episodes and to support the show. And if you could go to iTunes or wherever you get your podcast uh, and give any episode of The Guilty Feminist that you thought was good five stars, we'd really appreciate that. 
Also, if you could tell someone you know with your face or on a WhatsApp group or on a social media platform that you enjoy The Guilty Feminist and share that with them, it really helps spread the word about the show. Thank you so much. We appreciate you listening. We appreciate you coming out live. We appreciate everything you do and supporting any of the activist or artistic causes we share with you. And now back to the podcast. Our guest today is a self-described Arab Essex girl comedian who will challenge every single preconception of what that means. She won Best Show at Leicester Comedy Festival and she has been seen on live at the Apollo, the stand-up sketch show and a hypothetical. Please welcome to the stage and to the microphone, Esther Manito. Hello, hello. What a way to entrance, just making my way slyly down the stairs there. The man who was sat next to me up there is like, oh, this is exciting. She's getting up. <laughs> um, this, is, this is lovely. What a lovely, lovely place to be, doing the Guilty Feminist. What a lovely room. It's so much fucking nicer than doing the comedy clubs. It's so much nicer than doing the comedy clubs because the comedy clubs are fucking bleak. They're so bleak. I'll tell you about a gig I was doing. Uh, I did a gig last Wednesday in a comedy club in town and uh, there was a stag do in the front row. Now, oh. now, if anything says that all your mates think you're an absolute cunt, it's a Wednesday night stag, isn't it? <laughs> That's literally all mates going, what, Gary's getting married? <sighs> what, Friday or Saturday? Nah, fuck that. I'll just do a few hours after work on a Wednesday, actually. <laughs> That's the most I'm prepared to give. So they're sat in the front row, and they're a real bunch of lads, bunch of legends. You know, we all know the type. <laughs> real bunch of lads. And the stag, he was wearing a veil, because, like I say, absolute lad, absolute legend. <laughs> Right, and they were absolutely shit faced, really shit faced. And I don't know if you guys know this, but apparently, oh, a little word to the wise apparently, taking cocaine, toxic masculinity, and being an absolute prick is back in fashion. Way! What a time to be alive as a female comedian. Oh, thank you, Andrew Tate. And, um, <laughs> and the, the stag was sat there with his veil, and as close as I am to you, Consuela, as close as I am to you, Consuela. Harry, so close, close as I am to you. And I walked on, first act of the night, and all I said was, hello. And the stag leant forward and chundered everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. All across the front of the stage, across the tops of my shoes. And the veil acted as a sieve. <laughs> so it's all like bits of carrot in the veil. Like, and he got dragged out by security, like... <laughs> And I was just watching him and I was thinking, isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic that right now out there is some woman on a Hindu sat with all her girlfriends just going, oh my God, I'm so lucky I found the man of my dream. <laughs> oh my God, girls. <laughs> Yours is out there somewhere. <laughs> And I went home, right? I went home. Now, my dad, he lives with me. He lives with me and my husband and my kids. Now, my dad is a 78-year-old Arab Muslim Lebanese man. And I went home. He answered the door to me. I'm covered in vomit. He takes one look at me and he was like, I wanted you to be a lawyer or a doctor. My God, here you are being vomited on for money. I curse my eyes. Always cursing his own eyes. Always cursing his own eyes. But he gets his idioms mixed up quite a lot, does my old man, right? Because let's face it, English idioms, they're not the easiest, right? They're not the easiest to fathom. So I was telling him about the stag do, and he was like, you know, you know, you know, these people, these people, they really bugger my beliefs. Now, the native English speakers, we know that the idiom is, in fact, it beggars belief. But doesn't it buggers my beliefs just make so much more sense to you? <laughs> Don't it make so much more sense? Like if somebody had said during the height of the pandemic, if somebody had said to you at that time that in two and a half years, Matt Hancock would come third in a reality TV show, wouldn't you just be like, fuck me, that buggers my beliefs? <laughs> yeah. Mate, it don't just bugger them, it shafts them is what it's done. 
absolutely, it's amazing the things that people say. It's amazing. Like I, I often get quite a lot of angry responses from quite a lot of angry men. <laughs> and um, and like I was coming home from a gig, and this was a little while ago, and I was, I was coming home from a gig, and I was on the tube, and I was reading the Metro, right? Now, this article in the Metro, it, it was an article about a man who had been masturbating on the tube during rush hour in front of women and he was arrested, sentenced and jailed. Thank you. Yeah, well, I love the way that our, our expectations are so low. We're like, good for the world, arresting him. But all I did was I just took a photo of the article and I retweeted it. And all I said, all I said was... How the fuck did he have the space to get his cock out during rush hour? That blows my mind. Most of us can't even get our phones out of our handbags. Well, a very angry man, because like I say, they often are with me. A very angry man, he went and responded to my tweet. He went and responded, at Estimanito, hashtag not all men. I was like, no, you are right, sir. You have taught me. (laughs) And I have learned. It is not all men. Not all men. (laughs) Not any women, though, is it? Is it? Not any women, because no woman in the history of buses, trains, trams, no woman has finished a long day in the office, got on a crowded tube, sat opposite Stephen Gary, pulled down her knickers and then fudged herself stupid just for a little kick at the end of the day. My God, I know it's not all men. I know it's not all men. I've got a son who's absolutely brilliant. I was raised by a man who's fantastic. I'm married to a man who's fine. Thank you very much. Esther and Esther, everybody! Esther, come take a seat. It's Friday night, The Guilty Feminist. We're so thrilled to have you. Hello. Thanks for having me. Do you have any I'm a feminist buts? Um, I'm a feminist, but I really wish my husband would earn more money. (laughs) (laughs) so that I didn't have to gig to stag do's up and down the country. It's true, it's in true. In sports yeah. centres, yeah. yeah. I don't want to do that anymore. No, that's fair enough. No. I just want to stay at home and wipe the surfaces. I don't want to <laughs> do that anymore, actually. But you, then you can do whichever gigs you want to do. You just don't have yeah. to do the stag do ones. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, yeah. I, I can see that. Yeah. Tell him. Yeah, tell him. Yeah, just tell him. Just earn more, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I know. Mention it. Because they it. can just do that, right? Like, they can just earn more. Yeah, just ask. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, have you not read the news? Yeah. You just have to ask. Yeah. That's yeah. all you've got to do. So cool. You literally so just walk cool. into the CEO's office, put your penis on the table, yeah. boom. <laughs> Pay rise yeah. right there. Beautiful. Yeah. By the way, I don't get told I'm too hot to do comedy either. You fucking do, you liar. You fucking don't. Well, you are too hot to be doing comedy. <laughs> you didn't say that See to how me. I did. That. I did. No, you did not. No, she you did. did not. You did not say it like that. I believe the words were rolling boil, okay? Yeah. Rolling boil is not the same. We came to rolling boil together after a long conversation. You're right, Deb. You're right. You are too hot to be doing comedy. And uh, now, I'm guess not. who's the new host of The Guilty Feminist? <laughs> we are... We, we, do, is there a... Oh, is there a podcast we could do called Too Hot to be Doing Comedy? Oh, fuck <gasps> yeah. That's a funny idea, isn't it? Too Hot to be Doing Comedy... Rolling boil. Yeah, yeah, rolling, rolling boil. Rolling boil. Yeah, rolling boil. Rolling boil. Rolling boil sounds very brothy, doesn't it? Uh, like a woman does. who's making broth. Are Brothally. you more likely? Are you more likely to listen to a podcast and you have to cheer? Pick one. Are you more likely to listen to a podcast called A Rolling Boil? Cheer now. <laughs> or, or B Too Hot for Comedy. <laughs> we'll go with Too Hot for Comedy. Right. Tom, have I got time to do another podcast? He's left. He's left. (laughs) Okay, in that case, to kick the romance chat off, I am going to give you my top five romantic moments uh, with my husband, Tom, who also produces this show, who clearly has left the room. Okay. (laughs) 
So num- number six is now he shows affection by leaving the room. <laughs> okay, number five. This is just to start the chat going. Number five, number five. Tom makes me coffee and toast in bed every morning. Oh. Oh. But he does the same thing for the cats. So uh-huh. he gets up at, whenever they ask him, he gets up to do, you know, so I'm like, is it romance or is it Stockholm Syndrome? We don't know. <laughs> number four, number four. I mean, if he's unlocking the bedroom door to get to you, then you've got. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> it's like more like, you know. the chains before he comes in. Then <laughs> no, you've got, then no, you've got Stockholm no. The man situation. is ruled by pussy. It's great. That's fantastic. Nice, yeah. nice, nice. That is a very nice guy. <laughs> Number four, number four. Uh, if I'm away for Valentine's Day on tour, no matter how far flung, he finds that hotel that some other producer somewhere else has booked and he gets flowers sent there every single year. Every year I'm away on Valentine's Day. And in January this year, I said, darling, don't do that because I, I, I'm on tour. I can't take them with me to the next town. I just have to leave them in the hotel room. It's a bit of a waste of money. Just save it. When we and I come back, spend that money on maybe go for dinner or something. And he just looked at me. This is the third of January. He just looked at me and went, "What should I do if I've already organised it?" Third oh. of January. Third of January. Third of January. Now, bless him. That's more, to be honest, hyper organisation than romance. Um, <laughs> what more, Deb? Yeah. Love that. Yeah, it's, it's that? very nice. Number three. Number three. Number Cat three. Cat stalkery. <laughs> He's, I mean, we've been married for a long time. I feel like, to be honest, sometimes I think the definition of falling in love is just two, two stalkers who mutually agree not to call the police. <laughs> think about it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. You, 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 you so check hot. their phone when they're not in the room, you yeah. follow them home, you, you keep yeah. their hair in a jar. So hot. Uh, number three, number three, number three. Uh, I did one of my stand-up shows back in the day before The Guilty Feminist. I did one of my stand-up shows around 200 times. And nearly every time Tom would watch that show from the lighting booth, he'd do the lights. And he would text me if I ad-libbed anything new. So when I got back to my dressing room, it was there. If he thought said something funny and new, and so I'd remember it. And I think that's so much more romantic than like a trip to Paris or something, isn't it? Because it's like he's still listening after 200 shows. Wow. He's still fucking listening to anything I've got to say. He's heard the same show. Why hasn't he got headphones? Why isn't he? It's better than book? Siri. That's amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> better than Siri is the review he would like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that is incredible. I think that's not, I do think that's romantic. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, I think we're told romance is like hearts and flowers and violins and stuff, but it isn't. It's really somebody still listening to you when you've said the same thing 200 God, times. My husband might even come in the show anymore. He's like, I'm just going to sit in the car park. I can't oh. be bothered. He's like, I can't be bothered to go and listen to you banging on about how you called me wanky in the shed. I'm not doing, I'm not doing that again. I think your husband and, and Deb's husband need to hang, maybe. Hang, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have a good hang. Like a support group. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Husbands um, of comedians. I think he does all these things precisely because we have a deal that I will never talk about the time I caught him wanking in the shed. <laughs> I, di- I didn't. We don't have a shed. Number two. Number two. Oh, sorry. Did you have something else? No, I was going to say that my husband got really annoyed because I did that clip on Comedy Central and then it went viral around his office. Oh. And I then just... he got CC'd three times as shed wanker. <laughs> Whatever. That's I'm sorry. He, that's st- he's still a legend. Like, he would still get legend status in the and office, that's right? Exa- like that, yeah. That's exactly the moment when you say, baby, if you earn yeah. more money, I wouldn't need to do this. Yeah. Wouldn't need to do it, darling. 100%. You go in, you, you get that fucking promotion, and you will never be called Shed Wanker again. Yeah. <laughs> number two, number two. I once told Tom about some old out-of-print book I said I'd loved as a child, but I couldn't remember the name of. Uh, just, I just had a few details, a few sketchy details about what happened in the characters. Just with that, just with like the, the book of equivalent of a police artist drawing of a suspect, but with a kid's book, he found it on eBay and put it in my Christmas stocking. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? And number one, number one, once I had an argument with my husband and then I was catching a flight and we were still arguing and uh, he just went, don't get on the plane. And he ran to the airport, ran to the airport to make up and kiss me goodbye so that I didn't take off with him. He ran, which I'm a romantic comedy writer. That is the highest honor, yeah. including the Oscar. The run to, to get the a run airport. to the airport. Yeah. I admit yeah. I, I missed the flight. 
and then they lost my luggage because it was on that flight. It was the fucking disaster. Yeah. That's the but comedy still, part. I had the moment. I yeah. had the moment. They're my top five. I'm wow. throwing those on the table wow. as things that I think are romantic, more romantic than like, you know, some of the stuff we're told. I feel now... I've been, I can't top that. What do you think about romance and feminism? Do you think that we are so infected by patriarchal ideas of romance, we sort of almost can't be romantic and feminist? Well, I mean, what we grew up with, especially in the 90s, and this is touching on what you said, Zoe, about going for the old incel types, is that they did kind of indoctrinate us that we should be really excited when a prick suddenly turns around and goes, yeah, you're right, actually. And we're yeah. like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> or when a man keeps harassing you, even though you've said no, but he comes around yeah. with a boombox. Yeah. yeah. It's that thing, isn't it? It's like yep. most 80s rom-coms oh are really God. about a woman yeah. who's gone, Barry, I don't love you anymore. Barry. Oh my God. And the whole movie is Barry proving yes. to her that she does indeed yeah. love him. Yeah. Even though she's very sure in the act yeah. one. Barry should doesn't... not be in a rom-com. <laughs> you what? don't even have to go that no, it's far true. back. It's not a good rom-com name. Is it? <laughs> you don't even have to go that far back. Like, I recently rewatched You've Got Mail. Oh my God. Like, we all think of that as like, oh my God, classic, Meg Ryan, Tom, Tom Hanks. But like, the film is about a man usurping a woman's business, and then she falls in love with him. Like, like nothing happened. Because like, the wonderful man saved her from being single. I don't know. Like, it's crazy. Or like, The Office, like Jim and Pam, Pam didn't want that. <laughs> you remember that? Pam did not want that for a while, but it's like, oh my God, Jim. Like, what? <laughs> not I funny, but real. I did. I feel like Pam did want Jim. She just didn't know how to say it. Oh! <gasps> I'm not a feminist. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh she my said god. no a bunch. She said no with her mouth, but like not a with bunch. her eyes. I'm not a feminist. Yeah. Like a bunch. But it was about a woman that, that did. She always wanted him from the moment she saw him. She did. She did. She did. I'm not just a feminist. Wanna believe, we want to believe that because that's like what we're fed to believe is that like they're oh a my good god. match. Oh, that? that's buggered my beliefs. <laughs> So I want you... that on a t-shirt. <laughs> I will get that for you. I'll get that for you. Or how to lose a guy in 10 days. That used to fuck oh, me. Oh, that's wow. a But that's why I always movie. hated... Yeah, isn't it fucking bleak? Yeah. What's the most Just... implausible thing about that is, for me, is she's a magazine writer. It was before BuzzFeed, but it was like a top 10... You know, it was like a listicle, right? Yeah. And she had to go through with it. She couldn't just write it. They could knock one of those out no. in 10 minutes. No, she committed Why to the bit. She, she committed to, to like, the bit. Pretend to be a different person every day of the week. Yeah. Like that man would have left her in half yeah. an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She do not yeah. need to. Listen, I have pushed men away before. It's very easy. It you doesn't take 10 days. You don't need to turn days. up yeah. with a poodle and have it pee on his pool table. I want more words with pee in that sentence. <laughs> it's a poodle, it's a pee on a poodle. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't. You just have to, like, text him six times in a row. That'll do it. That'll fucking do it. You don't need... Yeah. You just have to kind of go... You just have to say, would you, would you like to not be an arse? And he's gone. Yeah. yeah. He's gone. So she didn't have to go as far as yeah. she did. But, oh, God, it was so fucking infuriating in that yeah. film. Mm. Oh, it did yeah, my head brutal. in. And then people are just like, oh, my God, it's so, like, classic woman. Like, oh, go fuck yourself. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. What? I'm the... not very articulate. That's the problem. <laughs> no, I, I think I think there's no more words needed than I think that is the most articulate way of saying it. Go fuck yourself yeah. because you won't be fucking. Or when mean. like you're supposed to have these romantic gestures on Valentine's Day. Oh yeah. And then it's like people going, and we all know we all know dickheads like it. We all know it when they're like, oh my god, he bought me like this really sexy lingerie and lube and like a fucking Ooh. handcuffs Ooh. and God Ooh. knows what. And you're like. No, that's just a really great night for him and a really shit night for you. It's just like, oh, he's bought me these arseless chaps. And you're like, okay. No one wants that. Fuck off. And a teddy. Oh, no. No. That I can't bear. A teddy. Now, are we, are we talking teddy lingerie or an actual teddy bear? Like li- yeah, either. It's I'm... infantilizing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he it's bought creepy. me a teddy. Oh. Grow yeah. the fuck up. Yeah. <laughs> Do I'd one. love to go out with you because I think it would be really funny. I don't know my, my self esteem. Like, uh, yeah, uh, I don't know that my self esteem would be good, but I, I feel it would be so funny. <laughs> I feel it would be so funny. I wonder what would a feminist romance look like? What, what is romance? What's the virtue of it? What's the what's the function of romance? So you're attracted to somebody sexually, but then you want more than just sexy times. You also want them to really care about who you are. This is what I'm thinking this through. Okay. So, so you want them to prove that they know you. Oh, that's maybe, yes, that's a good one. Okay, yeah. we'll write that one down. Prove they know you. But then it's like a quiz, isn't it, that they can fail. 
and there's a man laughing there going, <laughs> I failed. Yeah. Prove you know me. It's a quiz. Um, so prove they know you. What else is it? What else there, is romance at an, its heart? I think there's an element of trust. Like I think, you know, to be to be really vulnerable with a partner, you have to trust that they're not gonna like laugh at you or murder you. Like they're you know, they're Wow, that's a low bar for romance. That is a low bar for I realize. <laughs> Just um, don't murder me. Please don't kill me or my family. Um So who are you dating? I'm so terrified. <laughs> Awful men. <laughs> um, male, yeah, the, male comedians. Yeah, of yeah. course. The, the, yeah, <laughs> don't do it. Um, uh, what's the What's the piece that makes up romance for you? Can you tell me the most romantic gesture that's ever happened to you, or that, in fact, you've ever tried to do? You're not gonna like it. Okay. <laughs> So while I was, when I moved to the Netherlands, like before I moved, we were doing a lot of back and forth. And like on my third trip to visit him in, in the Netherlands, this is so bad. And I hope he never hears this. Um, I land at Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam. We go to the car. I've got my bags. We sit in the car and he hands me a small box. And I'm like, oh my God, it's a gift. <laughs> And I'm like, so like I put on so much makeup after flying and I was like trying to look hot for him and like it's terrible. And I open the gift and it's, it's a small, it's a round light. It's a small round light. It's shaped and it's like one of those fucking moon lights. You know what I'm talking about? The fucking 3D printed oh. fucking moon lights. What? And I, it's like shaped like the moon. Oh. And you pre- and it's and it's you press wireless. A button, it lights you press up. a button, it lights up. It's like a little tiny moon. And I, and I open it and I look at it and I look at him and he's like, he just shrugs. He's like, I got you the moon. Oh. That fucking asshole. <laughs> so yeah, of course I went down on him in the car. <laughs> like that's so romantic. He gave did me he, the moon. Like I, I, I fell for that. He gave you, he gave but you he the didn't, moon. Though. He fucking didn't. He fucking didn't. You're right, Esther. He didn't give me the moon. He gave me a 3D printed piece of plastic that was 17 euros on Amazon. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Does anyone want to so date me? <laughs> but it's the way he said it. Yeah. It gave you the yeah, moon. That's it. That made it, you yeah. feel it was yeah. the moon. I got a little wet. It was great. It, it reminds me of like It's a Wonderful Life when he says I'd get the moon for you on yes. a rope yeah. or I'd lasso the moon for you. He literally did that. Oh. Yeah, it's fucked. He didn't, though. He didn't. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He did not Fair. get you the moon. It's like, it's like buying somebody, you know when you can buy a star for someone and it's just <laughs> yeah, a certificate. Yeah. Yeah. They, uh, it's named after yeah. you and it's like, but is it, and where is it? Sponsored and have they... this panda for yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've donated to a charity somewhere yeah. for you. Yeah. <laughs> It's the for you. Yeah, it's, it's the, the for you. you. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What's the most romantic gesture you've ever had or made? It's going to be great. <laughs> uh, I've, I'm not so good with the old romance. Yeah. Uh, i got to say, I find it all a bit cringe and a bit weird. And if my husband ever tries to be romantic, I'm like, just sh- shut up. Shut up. It's just cringy. I know. I'll pull him. Um, no, I do. He needs a little shed. Um <laughs> I mean, you're hot and funny. He can't have everything. He can't have everything. I guess you know, when he proposed, that was all right. That was, you know. When he proposed, that was all right. Tell me more. Tell me more. Like, does he have a car? What was... What? Do you know what? <laughs> I was just like, look, he's a nice man. Nice man. We get on well. We get on. He's good at doing shit around the house. What the house. more would you ever want? What more do you ever I want? I now realise more money. yeah. yeah. Harry, we haven't talked to you for a little while. And I feel I'd like to throw this over to a gay man. What's romantic for you? Have you had any really romantic experiences? Not really. You haven't had any? Not particularly. Not particularly. What are you hiding from us? Because that, that's so... Vague. You thought about it and you were like, oh, no. And if you don't want to share it, you absolutely don't have to, but we'll all be disappointed. <laughs> An episode. An episode. Oh, a little bit, yeah. But don't, don't feel pressured genuinely. There was one time when I went, went out and I was going to go see some friends and they cancelled me and came back. Then he'd arranged a little, a little gathering for me in the kitchen with the said friends and everyone else. It was quite nice. Oh, Aww. so you went out. There's an interesting one, though, that one, isn't it? Because it's a little bit manipulative. Because cause he, he... So if you're listening at home, you didn't hear that. If some friends said, oh, let's all go out. And you arranged and you went out and they cancelled. And you're like, oh, 
I guess I'll just have to go home. And when you went home, your boyfriend at the time had arranged for those very self-same friends to be in your kitchen, <laughs> even though you'd gone out to see them. <laughs> I'm I'm, so rude. <laughs> I'm not sure. Like, so they always surprise. But, <laughs> but I, you were expecting to see them just in another more glamorous location. <laughs> Did he also was... clean your kitchen? Sorry? Did he clean your kitchen first? No. Oh, rude. Was, like, he so your, rude. was this your shared house? Yes. Ah. So, what? Okay. Not shared, not, he wasn't involved. I don't know why he was even there, actually. What? He wasn't, how was it romantic if he wasn't involved? I thought he was throwing you a surprise party. Maybe someone let him in like a cat or something. I don't know. Someone let him in like a cat. That's... that's, that's why the, the str- kitchen and not the living room? Oh, uh, right. The kitchen is the Stu- living room. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. Okay, um, I get it. You're, so you're, Consuela and Harry, you're both students. I work. You work, okay. Consuela, you said you were doing, you would. Oh, Consuela, you're doing a master's. Are you in the same undergrad course? And now you're doing a postgrad and Harry's abandoned education. <laughs> to go out and make his way in the world and he's now going to the Graduate School of Life. What do you do, Harry? I work in advertising. Oh, Mad Men. <laughs> do you know any Don Drapers? What's that? <laughs> Are you joking? You're in advertising? Yeah. And you don't know who Don Draper is? No. Are you in creative? No. What are you in? Accounts. Oh. <laughs> Then don't Forgiven. say you're in advertising. That's false advertising. Yeah. That's, that's false advertising. When we say you're advertising, we think Don or we think Roger. Um, uh, so you've got to pick one of those. Don me or Roger me. <laughs> or leave me forever. Okay, so things we'd cut out of romance if we could. If we were reinventing romance for the feminist age, what would you not want to have happen again? All of it. Um, <laughs> what would I not want to have happen again? I think I like I, I'm a gooey romantic, and I feel like that is very uh, like intimidating for new partners. And I feel like a globby goopy fool. And it would be great to not feel that way. Like I, I think it's really fun that like I I'm a dumb romantic, but it feels like a diagnosis when a woman is romantic. Like it feels feels that's like that's interesting. A and feminist. Mental. It feels like a diagnosis yeah. when a woman is romantic. Yeah, like it doesn't feel nor- okay, like normal. Okay, so what you would like feminist romance to be is uh, you can normal. go in at any level. That's really that's interesting. Again. <laughs> yes, that's really interesting because if a man comes outside a woman's house with a boombox. It's like, oh my God, it's the end of the movie. If a woman comes outside a man's house with a boombox, it's the beginning of the movie and it's a thriller. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. That is exactly Psycho. it. Psycho. That's, that's interesting. I'm end, that. end of movie and romance. I think it's my material now because I no, said it on stage. No, sorry, I want it. Oh, because you, you're doing a show about romance. Yeah, I want it. You can have it. Thank you. Okay. And that is romance. That's girlfriend romance there. So um, you want to you wanna be able to basically do all the romantic things to the guy? I, like I'd like for there to be a mutual. Like I, I love receiving romance too; is great. But I, 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 I just like it's goofy, and I think I, I don't like the the imbalance. And I, I, I love my parents; they're wonderful. They raised me great. But in my household, it was very much my dad did the romantic stuff. I e on Valentine's Day got all of the me and my sister and my mom like got us all chocolates. Like it was it kind of institutionalized. Oh. Very sweet, but also like fuck off. Like that it's not setting me up for success for yeah. the rest oh, of my life. Because you're expecting that. Absolutely. And you're not mm. getting it. Uh-uh. Okay. All right. I didn't see a lot of romance in my house growing up, really. I don't think. No. <laughs> Did you have a lot of romance, Esther, growing oh, up? Oh good God, no. <laughs> good God. I've got I mean, I've got an Arab father, which barely means he ever says he like likes me, let alone <laughs> He's just like, you're here. <laughs> but I but, bet he loves you with a passion. Well, I mean, I hope, but he wouldn't, he doesn't say it. I mean, even when I did Live at the Apollo, he ended that. I was just like, are you happy now, Dad? And he was like, are we done now? Oh. No, but he means it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's honest. <laughs> if you could reinvent romance so that the secret thing you love about it that you don't dare say you love because you go, oh, I'm not a romantic, I don't like any of that. What is the thing that you would have from it? 
I, I don't know. I do find it all a bit kind of awkward. How did your husband propose? He got... Someone, someone applauded at the idea of your husband applauded, <laughs> proposing there. He, um, he, he proposed up a mountain in the Lake District. <gasps> I love that. Yeah. And uh, he got down on one knee and I went, oh, don't be a dickhead. And he went, he went no, because I'm going to ask to just shut up. Just shut up, yeah? I'm going to do this, whether you like it or not. He said the whole thing had been really stressful. He tried to ask my parents' permission. Yeah, that, but my that's... dad's deaf, so my dad was just in a restaurant going, I don't know what he's saying. And he was like, I just want your daughter's hand in marriage. And my dad was like, why would I give that? She's her own person. Piss off. <laughs> so um, it was all very clunky. And then he just went, look, I just, like, will you marry me? And I thought it'd be really funny <laughs> to say, no. <laughs> was it really funny? It wasn't because... Oh! That man didn't land. That man's <laughs> face just crumbled. And then I was like, no, 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 I'm joking. Yeah, no, I will. I will. <sighs> Everything's fine. That's a little bit like arranging to meet friends out. <laughs> so that they can cancel on you and meet you at, be waiting for you at home. This has been an absolutely fantastic episode of The Guilty Feminist. I don't know if it's our most feminist episode, but it's certainly been one of the most enjoyable. Um, it, I've really had a good time tonight. Have you had a good time? We're doing more shows here. Are all the other shows here sold out, Tom? Or are there still any tickets? Scattered seats. Well, that'll suit Consuela and Harry. <laughs> I've got to ask, Harry Consuela and everyone who came thinking it was a play, which is everyone who came, Consuela, has this been as good as the play you thought it would be? Better. Sorry? Oh. Better. Okay. Wow. I just do want to do one very short scene from the play, okay? Yeah. Zoe, can you leave? And then you have to come back in. You better take the mic. Okay. So I'll be sitting here. I'm going to be having a cup of tea and reading a newspaper because I think people do that in plays, don't they? <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe I'll make it. I'll better. be leaning. Mm. <laughs> And arranging these candlesticks. Mm. And the, the, play, the play is called The Guilty Feminist, by the way. Okay. Do you think she'll be out in time for Christmas? I've got no idea. I mean, with sentencing these days, you can never tell, but apparently... Well, if she keeps pegging Nazis the way she's been going... Then... Ding dong! Oh. Deliveroo. <laughs> I've done it. I've picked the Fuhrer. I hope it wasn't disappointing in any way. Consuela's party, you have now at least had a play that apparently was... Called The Guilty Feminist, but then it had one of those other little mini titles, which was Pegging the Fuhrer. <laughs> which I don't think I can say, only Zoe can say, but she did say it, now I've repeated it and I feel dirty. Okay. <laughs> Zoe, do you have anything to plug? Yeah, I'm working on a brand new hour, but it's currently a half hour. It's a split show with another amazing comedian. We're going to be doing tons of work in progress shows over the next few months, prepping for Fringe. Please come. It's funny, and I'd love to meet all of you. And so you're going to be doing faces. previews in London and previews then in London Edinburgh Festival and Edinburgh Festival, hopefully. Um, but like also a few other fringes before the Edinburgh Fringe. And what's um, it called? It's called uh, Tied for Second. Nice, intriguing. Ooh, we want so more. Zoe Brownstone. Yeah, tied. And, and it is about romance, isn't it? Uh, themes of romance and and being a Jew. We love it. Um, we need more of it. Uh, so if you want to come, please come. Um, follow me on Instagram. I'm at Zoe Brownstone. Um, please c- follow me and come. Like I, you guys are so great. They are great, aren't they? <laughs> follow us and come. Follow and come. See. <laughs> okay, this is now veering into an advert for your Hinge profile. Yes. <laughs> also that. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Uh, so Zoe Brownstone, follow and come. Uh, that's a great name for your next show. Yeah, that should be your show. Esther Manito, anything to plug? Yes, I'm doing a show here in August, the 17th, 18th and 19th of August called Hell Hath No Fury. Oh, I love oh. that. 
book tickets now because that will sell out and you know where this theatre is so it's relaxing <laughs> I need to say Harry and Consuela it's not a play it's a stand-up comedy show but you've already seen Esther do stand-up and you're definitely going to want to come to that uh, find Zoe's uh, shows go to Esther's shows uh, we've got more Guilty Feminists coming up here where apparently there are some scattered seats I'm sure that will sell out we've also got shows coming up at King's Place which is in King's Cross a nice arts centre there so go to guiltyfeminist.com and just click on live shows and you'll see that. I also have a play. Oh! <laughs> my very audience! Oh! Okay, okay, Harry, it's in Chichester. So you've got to get a train out of town, but it's a very well-respected theatre. Lots of Londoners go there and things try, tr- sort of, you know, develop there and then they come into town. There's a very glamorous theatre, okay? It's called the Minerva at Chichester Festival Theatre. It's on all of September. I wrote it. I am not in it. But Alexandra Roach is in it. Uh, Greg Wise is in it. Mr. Willoughby. Um, from Sense and Sensibility and many other things. He was also in The Crown. And uh, Susan McComa, who you know and love from this show, as well as lots of telly shows. Uh, so uh, it's selling really well. They said to they went, God, this show is like selling so, so well. So could you get tickets now? Because otherwise you're not going to get to see it. All, it's on all of September. You do have to get a train to Chichester, but it's really lovely. You can have fish and chips by the seaside and you still be home in time for bed. Um, it's called Never Have I Ever and it's about uh, two couples who've known each other since university and they play a drinking game and sexy things and you and money and identity politics and oh my god what is this happening uh, so please come and see that thank you so much huge round of applause for Zoe Brownstone <laughs> Esther Benito everyone at Soho Theatre Harry Consuela Zoe Brownstone and our very special guest Esther Manito. The recording engineer was Grundy Lazimbra. Music was by Mark Hodge. The producer was Tom Salinsky for the Spontaneous Shop. Thanks to Rachel Croft, Machina, GCO, Zaina, Bahamut, and everyone at Soho Theatre, as well as all of you for listening. For more information about this and other episodes, visit guiltyfeminist.com. Um, did you bring that water out yeah. with you? Tom, on it. no, no, no. We were told there would be water on the table. <laughs> we ordered that from the patriarchy, and they said, <laughs> the patriarchy said it's the least we can do after everything we haven't done. And I, I trusted that. Do you know I trusted that? And because I'm a fool to myself, I've lived with the patriarchy all, all, patriarchy all my life. It's given me very little. Um, but this tonight, I went. I believe it'll come through. And this, I don't trust men, so I brought yeah. my own. You brought your own. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Disappointing, disappointing for me. I've yet, yet again, I've been disappointed by a man. Um, you haven't been because you haven't trusted a man. This is the first lesson in feminism, Consuela. <laughs> question feminism, question feminism. Uh, I mean, Co- Consuela, would you identify as a feminist, just to be clear? Just, you do, and you're just looking at the, you just think it's fun to kind of play in the, play in the, what can I do better? Oh, gosh. Okay, we'll, we'll, <laughs> I would need to know what you were doing now. Um, <laughs> that would be my first question. Uh, we may not be exactly the people to demonstrate how to do it better. <laughs> this is called the guilty feminist. Uh, and I'll tell you why, Consuela. Uh, I, I should do the plug for the... Po- I should do the, uh, the, slow, the slogan for the podcast. Okay. <clears throat> this is the guilty feminist. The podcast... In- oh. <laughs> just didn't have the right run up you know take two yeah the guilty feminist is provided exclusively from Acast find it wherever you get your podcasts